I'm Jessica Hart reporting. I talked with a woman who was sitting next to a man who had a box cutter on a Frontier flight to Tampa. She says once her and another passenger realized what he had, they couldn't stay silent. So I was in 26C. Um, we had a passenger in 26B who came on the flight, kind of agitated. Um, it was a little different. He like dropped all of his stuff, lost his shoe on the plane, um, finally kind of picked it up and it was really different. He sat down and tried to talk to me and then the guy in 26A um, and then started getting fidgety once we took off. Started playing with something, started leaning into the guy's face. Um, and then he's, as he's like leaning over, I looked and he had a box knife that was about this big with the blade still in it. Um, and he was like still trying to put it in the actual apparatus um, and so he ended up looking over to the guy sitting by the window and told him that he was wanting to stab people so he got over um, decided he wanted to get up to use the bathroom he got up sat back down got up and finally went and so the guy who was sitting by the window told me like hey we need to go tell somebody so I ended up going up to the front to talk to the flight attendants and they called the pilot immediately who said that we were going to land he dropped the plane in about 20 minutes they had taken two veterans, a Navy veteran and an Air Force veteran, to sit in my seat and then kind of block me in so that way if anything were to happen um, that he wouldn't try to get into me. Um, and he had seen him and then freaked out, which was the part she saw. <laughs> yeah, I say, so me and the guy that was sitting in 26A, um, we were like, hey, we should probably tell someone as well. So we notified, we flagged down one of the flight attendants and we told her, we're like, hey, look, so this guy that's sitting here that's in the bathroom, he has a knife and he wants to stab someone. And she was like, ha, you guys are joking, right? Like, that's your friend? And we're like, no, <laughs> we have no idea who this guy is and we are being 100% serious. And she's like, oh. And she turns and runs and goes and tells the other flight attendant in the back. Um, and then at that point in time, um, was he Navy or Air, Air Force? Came he, back. The Air Force guy. Or no, um, Navy. Navy. Sorry. Sorry. Um, the Navy gentleman came up and he stood right next to Lily's seat. And I was like, did you trade seats with her? He's like, yes, I did. I said, okay, good, good. Um, he's like, he's not getting by me. Nothing's going to happen. I'm like, okay. So he finally, the suspect finally came back, um, took one, one look up and down, very tall, broad gentleman, very sweet. Um, and he's like, hey, this is my seat. And he's like, I know, you can sit. And he's like, no, this seat's occupied. And he's like, yeah, by me. And at that point in time, he turned around and went back to the back, and we thankfully didn't see him again. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like he was back in um, the 26 or 29 row yeah. and was talking to a former parole officer who was basically kind of keeping him calm and making sure nothing happened past that. Um, and they, he stayed there till we landed. They exited everyone off the plane, single file, kind of by row. And at the very end, while they were trying to get people off, he charged the flight attendant wielding the box knife towards her. So the Air Force veteran ended up tackling him until police officers can come and arrest him and get him off the plane. I mean, that's just a lot to take in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then the fact that there were people on that flight who were like, I'm going to sit here, you go over there. Yeah. Like, what was your reaction when people were like, nope, you go over here, I'm going to take your seat? Uh, it was fantastic. So it ended up being the pilot who had told the flight attendant to get the two veterans, and they were more than happy to go and take care of the situation. So very grateful for them for being on the flight because it could have been a lot worse. Right. <laughs> How are, you, how are you guys doing? I mean, do you guys, I mean, they've kind of come out and said now that the CT operator had like made a mistake, but like, how do you guys kind of feel about flying knowing that this happened? Nervous. Nervous. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now that we know stuff like this can get through, I ended up having a screwdriver walking through here and they went through all of my stuff and pulled that out, but they couldn't find a box cutter. So like that's, I don't know if I want to fly too much here recently. I might drive next time we go to Florida. <laughs> It's not a horrible drive. No. We'll stop in Tennessee. <laughs> have some fun. <sighs> what do you guys Just... hope maybe kind of the TSA takes away from the situation so it doesn't happen to anybody else again? They need to be stricter and more diligent. Um, I mean, box cutters. We had another girl who said that she would gotten a box cutter on a flight before. I mean, it's not an uncommon mistake, apparently. And they said they've seen, what, like 6,000 weapons? Like, they probably need to work on that a little bit better. <laughs> 
I know we were talking earlier and there were some things you wanted to clear up. I know you cleared up the whole blade situation. Is there anything that you saw that just wasn't accurate that you kind of want to set straight in the news? Uh, it was definitely the blade. Um, he still had a blade in that box cutter that he had on the flight with us. Um, it was, I mean, that big, it was still in the actual um, box cutter. So we want to at least make sure that was there. Like he wasn't just wheeled a random box cutter with nothing in it. So, Reporting at CVG, Jessica Hart, WCPO 9 News.